What is up, you damn colleges and beautiful, beautiful gamers? Welcome back to role playing games. This is Mariel Kalna in the internet where we like to discuss about RPGs. So, when you are just starting out outward, it's a very, very challenging game, especially if you don't have any idea about crafting, which can actually make your, your life so much easier. So, in today's video, I am going to show you some of the best early game recipes, some of the best recipes that I like to use when I start a brand new playthrough, but we are also going to be taking a look at some recipes that I actually use late game. So if you're a veteran and you are not using these recipes, then I do not know <laughs> what the hell are you playing to. Anyways, let's begin with one basic, one really really basic recipe, and it's, it comes from cooking. That is, you will need a crafting station, a cooking crafting station. In this one, we're just going to be taking a look at one, one specific of them all, and this dry mushroom bar. You can get common mushrooms in caves, and you will get them like, uh, li like by a, a whole lot of mushrooms that you will find in there. You'll get lots and lots of them. So instead of just taking them and not knowing what to do with them, I would recommend for you to start making dry mushroom bars. When you get back to hub base, when you get back to your town, get all of those mushrooms and instead of selling them, at least craft some of these ones. Because when you're just starting out and you don't have access to the most powerful potions, you will need that health back, you will need the maximum health. As you can see, I believe that I don't have my maximum health right now, no I do not have it. I do not have mushrooms as well <laughs> either, but this could satisfy my food, it could also make my max health be again on max. So it's a win-win scenario if you craft these little things, because out of 4 common mushrooms, you will get 5 dry mushrooms bar bars. Now we're going to get into the manual crafting ones. You don't actually need any kind of crafting station for these ones. You'll just need to have them in your inventory and that's it. And the basic, very very basic one, when you, when you are just starting out the game, you are going to need bandages. Bandages are going to recover a little bit of your health, but it's also going to recover the bleeding status ailment, the bleeding debuff, which can be very very annoying and if you do not treat it, you're going to die so very easily in the exploration that you make. Moving on, we have, let me show you right, uh, real fast, the fanged weapons. Yes, these are so very very powerful weapons when you are just starting out the game. These are the weapons that you want to make before you start looking for a better weapon. Some people is going to tell you, hey, go take this weapon right here, uh, it's a very very early weapon, but usually you will have to fight some things to get those weapons. And if you have a, a basic iron weapon, it's it, it's possible, it's doable, but it's not like the most efficient way to do it. Now the fanged weapons are going to do amazing things for you. As you can see my air, iron claymore, I have damage 24, impact 26, and attack speed 1. This one is going to improve it, it's going to give you 4 more damage, it's going to give you more impact, it's going to give you more attack speed, but also it's going to inflict bleeding on enemies. And you can actually take the weapon that you like and make this recipe. It doesn't matter it's, if it's a one-handed sword, an axe, uh, there are some restrictions to these recipes, but mainly almost every single weapon, iron weapon, you can turn them into fanged weapons. You need predator bones, which you will get from hyenas very very early in the game, and linen cloth, which is very very common, commonly found in chests. And if you actually try to make this on smaller weapons, you don't actually need to have two predator bones, but just one. Just play around with the crafting recipe. If you don't actually nail the correct ingredients for the recipe, they are not going to be going to waste, they are just going to not make the weapon. So yeah, another one amazing, amazing early recipe that I like to use is, remember, I forgot to mention, you don't actually need to, need to know these recipes, like, you only need the ingredients and then you can craft them. You don't need to have the formula, alright? 
the fire rack. Early game, you are going to need some extra damage source. And that extra damage source is going to be fire racks because they are very, very easy to make. As you can see, we need linen and thick oil. You will get, again, linen cloth from chests all around use exploration and the thick oil is going to come from iron veins and you ideally you don't actually need thick oil that much you actually need this to fill up your your lantern which is another early recipe it's very very useful i mean just place thick oils into your every used lantern and you will light them back but getting extra elemental damage on your weapon with fire racks it's amazing, especially if you are just starting out the game and you don't actually have weapons. And remember that it doesn't matter what kind of weapon do you have, you can attach this thing to any kind of weapon. So now, moving on, I'm not actually using any kind of like uh, complex recipes in this guide because I do not see the point in it. But this is not, I already showcased this in one guide. A primitive satchel is going to be made by height and linen cloth. It's a very, very basic satchel, actually. And it's a very, very shitty <laughs> satchel. But it's very easily made, and you need one of this to make the scale satchel. You can get scale leathers from the Soroborian ca Carabineers, and this is basically the best satchel that you can get early on and actually arguably i actually use it during my whole playthroughs as well that is until i can manage to upgrade it uh, let's move on to potions which are some of the most important recipes that you are going to need in this game you will need to have a crafting station you will have to have a alchemy crafting station sets off for this one but astral potions which if you are a caster you are going to need mana and to make astral potions you need clean water star mushroom and turmip you will get these two ingredients in the world be out there in the lookout for them uh, there are sometimes in in caves you can also find them in caves as well as chests so if you have them you only need one of each of these ones and clean water as well as well and then we have the uh, uh, let me see if I can find it life potion blood mushrooms and gravel beetles you'll get blood mushrooms again in caves uh, they are going to have this very specific icon they are easily recognizable and also a gravel beetle to get a gravel beetle you'll get them in iron veins so be sure to be picking all of those iron veins that you can find throughout the world and in caves as well and finally i do not have the recipe in this character because i have not made them yet but um, for endurance potions let me actually take you to the alchemist right here at levant and see if he actually has the materials that we need to craft this potion. He should. They yeah, are very, very common. Let's see. Do you? Do you have them? Do you have what I need? Unfortunately, I believe that he doesn't. Well, that's unfortunate. That's really, really goddamn unfortunate. Well, to craft those, you are going to need uh, X, just regular normal X and crimp nuts, which you will find out there in the world exploring as well. Just combine two of those and you will get a stamina potion. Now that we know how to make those kind of potions, we need to know how to upgrade them. Because ideally, the gain that you are going to be getting from upgrading these potions, it's going to be huge and I actually if I am being completely honest, I do not recommend you to just make the bare bones potions and carry them exploring. As you can see, in my backpack, I always have the upgraded versions on my pocket because they are hugely, hugely better. So, to make the upgraded hell potion, you are going to need a greasy fern, which you can gather from mountains and uh, merchants as well. Merchants are going to sell this thing. As you can see, 
once you have your life potion, you only need one of these things, and it's going to turn it into a great life potion, which is going to instantly restore your health and your max health in just one sip. So ideally, every time you are exploring, you only need to carry three of these kind of potions, and that's it. Like, it's an amazing deal, so make sure that every time you have life potions on you, get Rissy Ferns, which you can uh, actually also buy from merchants, and upgrade them. Like, again, the return that you are going to get from this potion, it's much, much better than the ones that you are going to be spending if you actually decide to buy the crafting material from Benthos. Now to upgrade our stamina potions, we will need, again, a crimp nut, which, again, you can get it out the exploring the world. And you know what? We have the Sorborian Caravanier right here. Let me see if this guy has some. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Let me see what other kind of benders do we have out here at Levant. We have the Baron Montgomery and the uh, Engineer Austin. We also have Smooth the Tailor. No, I believe that's not Shopkeeper. Maybe we will have a little, little, little bit more luck with the shopkeeper right here. Oh no, that's the chef. Yeah, this is the chef. He's not going to have them. Is this the sh shopkeeper? Are you? I believe you are. Yes, yes you are. And uh, no. That's doo doo. Anyways, uh, usually. Mm, Alchemists are the ones that are going to have these materials, but uh, Once you have your basic stamina potions, all you need to do is add a crimp nut Which is going to make it it's going to turn it into great endurance potion, which Instantly is going to restore your stamina and max stamina, but also it's going to give you this little buff right here stamina recovery 5 recover 1 0.2 stamina per second for 900 seconds so <laughs> every time you're out there exploring you're going to have this thing and it's never i believe that it's never going to run out uh during your exploration you ideally you explore out there in the world and then come back to your hub town and sell your stuff that you gather and there is that's basically it and finally we have our great astral potion all we need to add to this thing is Ghost's Eye. The spectral remains used in ethereal related alchemical recipes. This once you are going to get it from ghosts, like the skeleton ghost that you that you see roaming out there in the world in dungeons mainly. In Emekar Forest, I believe that they are dungeon and they are mm, lurking out there in the world. But mainly they are going to be on dungeons. Be sure you are you actually all of these materials that I'm showing you, you can also get them from chests while exploring the world and while exploring dungeons. So make sure to keep them in your inventory and use them to craft these recipes because they are amazing. Like being able to instantly restore your complete mana and the maximum mana that you can have. Like I said, it's nice to have your basic potions. But it's a better idea to actually know how to upgrade them into maximum potions, which I believe that you should be using them instead of the normal single ones. As a matter of fact, as you can see right here that I am carrying some life potions, I am carrying endurance potions, I am carrying astral potions, but I do not have them in my pocket because I better like to use while exploring the great potions and I would argue that you should never use these ones because it's so easy to upgrade them to the maximum tier of those potions. Those are the ones that I advise that you should be using while exploring the world. And finally, just to wrap up the video, these are very very beginner friendly and some potions that are going to save your life in so many scenarios. The cool potions. Again, the gravel beetles, you will get them from Iron Banes. And just one of these little things alongside clean water is going to give you cool potion, which is going to temporarily increase your froze damage resistances, starts the, the process of curing fever. But I also believe, if I am not mistaken, let me see if I have some of those right here. Uh, fortunately, I believe that I do not have. 
But anyways, they are going to provide you with elemental resistances to temperature of that specific potion. We have the warm potion as well, which is going to increase your fire damage resistances. And this is made by thick oil and just clean water, which again, you can get uh, thick oil just by mining iron veins. And every time you're in a hot place, use the warm potion. Every time you're in a cold place, use the cold potion. It's not going to give you that much resistance to be completely able to negate those weather effects. But it's a nice little upgrade for you to explore a little bit more without having to worry that much about uh, the climate and temperature that of the place that you're in. And those upgrades, pretty much, some re recipes, early recipes, that I always use, I always use early game and some of the recipes that I told you that I use throughout my entire playthrough I always use them, I always have them and they are game changer, that I, they are easily made you don't actually have to be searching far and wide uh, trust me, if you explore the world, you open your chest, you open junk piles you will always have these materials and when you come back to sell your stuff from your exploration, make sure that you actually craft all of these things before you head out to explore. That being said, remember to like the video and subscribe before you close the door and remember that if no one has told you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person, you are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person. Have a beautiful day and remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.